come down and visit us in even greater numbers. Um, you may have seen in the past when you visit us, we might have a line outside because we have limited capacity. Now that's been lifted, so hopefully we can invite even more of you to come, come by and say hi. So in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you about some fossils today. Um, here we have fossil nautiloids, which are really unusual kind of fossils. Um, you know, we get a lot of like, you know, dinosaur teeth and bones and stuff like that. And those are pretty common. Um, people, that's maybe like what people expect when they think about fossils. We also get, um, I've done a whole episode on ammonites and trilobites. Those are the other sort of like main categories. And nautiloids, I think, are not as well appreciated as perhaps they could be. They're a little bit of like an underdog here. Not as, not everybody notices them, but they're super weird and very cool. And so I wanted to highlight a few of the nautiloid pieces that we have today. So this is an example of kind of like a freestanding nautiloid that you might see here in the store. Um, this is basically a nautiloid, you have to imagine, right, that this is kind of the shell of the animal. It was a, 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 an aquatic animal. It lived 400, I think, and 65 million years ago during the Ordovician period. So this is a period of time when I think all life existed in the sea. There was no sort of land-based organisms yet. I think at the end of the Ordovician period, there started to be some plant life that migrated onto the earth, but this is still hundreds and hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs. So this is very, very old. In fact, it's one of the oldest fossils that we have in the store, one of the oldest forms of life. So it's very special in that way. And so you have to imagine that this is the shell of the animal, kind of like a seashell. And then out of the top here would be these like tentacles. So you have to imagine kind of like a squid almost with a like, conical shell on the top. And these individual chambers in the shell would have been filled with, with gas. And the way that the um, nautiloid would move through the water is it would increase or decrease the pressure in each of these little gas you know gas filled chambers and that would allow it to um, to affect its buoyancy and its level in the water so that's kind of how it would move it's a very strange and weird thing ammonites did this as well um, so they are related to ammonites in that way and um, you can also see in, in, in some ammonite, in some nautiloids rather, it's really well preserved. And this one is a good example. You see this, this kind of corridor going down the middle of it. This is called a siphuncle. I'm not sure exactly what, you know, um, anatomical function this served, but it is um, something that exists, I think, in seashells today as well. So this is a really old biological feature that evolved hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago and um, probably had something to do with how the gas maybe traveled between the different chambers and stuff. So these are cool. Um, they call these, sometimes people refer to these as letter openers because they're kind of that shape. They're a little thick to actually do that, you know, per, serve that function. I think of them more as paperweights. And what's really cool is you can see on the other side as well, they just, they're everywhere. So you get sort of one main one, right? But then there are little traces of them all over and in the back as well. Nautiloids are actually used commonly as construction materials. So you might see that people um, take large plates like this and they sort of sand them down and polish them and they make, you know, tiles out of them for flooring, for walls. There are people that make incredible pieces of furniture and like home accessories out of this material. It's incredibly beautiful when it's polished down and it's also really, really strong. This feels kind of like a block of cement. Um, so you can see why people have, you know, adapted this material to, you know, as, a, as like a building material, a construction material. And so this one's a little bit different because it's brown. Um, most of the time you're gonna have ammonites that are black like this. But of course, the color of a fossil depends on the mineral composition in which it was preserved. So this particular piece was preserved in a place that had more sort of a reddish mineral composition. A lot of times red comes from iron. So I wonder if there was um, a higher iron concentration in this particular area. And then finally, um, we have little tiny baby nautiloids that have been made into these adorable pendants. So you can see, there are big and small nautiloids 
of all different types for all different functions. And these are so cute and pretty and they are 465 million years old. So that is just a little bit of our nautiloid collection. Um, hopefully you can come check us out and help celebrate uh, this important milestone for everybody. And um, we will see you around. Thanks for joining us, bye.